to sum up what we've learned so far, all truth we learn about the world and universe comes from the scientific method, which involves us making observations, making theories to explain them, making predictions from these theories and testing them to find evidence. Now, if this wasn't confusing enough, well, I'm afraid it's gonna get worse. Because while it may seem straightforward what it means to disprove a theory, in reality, it isn't so. Because any given theory you come up with to explain any given physical phenomena could be correct, given that that theory is made complex enough. Let me illustrate this by another example from physics. Well, following our scientific method, another observation we might make is that um, every year we go through different seasons with different temperatures, while the location of the sun on the sky seems to vary, all with a period of what we call one year. A theory to explain this, as we all know, is of course that the Earth orbits around the Sun for a period of one year. However, a theory that at first glance seems equally possible is that in fact the Sun orbits the Earth with a period of one year. And that is in fact what people used to believe for a very long time. Now, the astronomer Galileo Galilei uh, showed us some very peculiar things that emerge when we adopt the view that the Sun and the other planets orbit around the Earth, which is that rather than going in a circular path like the Sun, the other planets seem to um, adopt a wobble, i.e. rather than going in a smooth circular path, they um, make additional loops, as you see here. On the other hand, if we adopt the view that the Sun is stationary and the Earth and the other planets orbit around it, it does turn out that each of the planets seems to move on a more or less circular path. And that was in fact one of the major arguments which led us to adopt the heliocentric model. However, while the simplicity of the sun sensitive model and pretty much everything else we know about the universe, including Newton's law, and what we know about distant stars and other galaxies would indicate that this is in fact the correct model. It isn't really proof that it is so. It is not inconceivable that the laws of physics in the end turn out to be that arbitrary that they allow for a universe where everything orbits around the Earth. And that is where Occam's razor comes in. What this um, argument states is that when given a number of possible theories to explain a given phenomenon, the least complicated one is always the one to be used. Now, this is not to say that the least complicated one is a correct one. However, for any given phenomenon, you can always come up with an arbitrarily complex theory that will end up explaining it. And that wouldn't get us anywhere. You might as well assume that gravity is caused by ghosts or that electromagnetism is caused by gnomes. But while these are in themselves valid theories, rather than answering questions about the universe, they would only create more. For instance, why do the ghosts do what they do or who created the gnomes? If the sun was to orbit the earth, Newton's law of gravity couldn't be valid. And thus, for this theory to be true, the whole laws of physics would have to be different from what we already thought we had established. In other words, it would be a very, very complex theory. I guess, in essence, what I'm trying to say here is that um, while no theory can definitively be proven or disproven, the scientific method requires us to go with the one which most simply but accurately describes the world around us. I hope that all made sense so far. Now there's a last point I like to make about uh, conspiracy theories. 
well, I've been getting a lot of questions about these, for instance, 2012 rapid pull reversals or uh, Planet X. And don't get me wrong, I'm very happy about all of your questions. In fact, I would like to make a videos about them as well. However, the fact of the matter is that you are way too concerned about these questions, as I shall explain now. Well, some of them are plain wrong and contradict everything that we know about physics. Or at least think to know about physics. Others are not, and actually describe physically realistic scenarios. However, that does not necessarily mean they're credible concerns. And that is best illustrated if we apply the scientific method. Now, as I've explained, for scientific theories and any worldly concerns we derive from them to emerge, there has to be an initial observation that has to be explained. Now, a perfect example to illustrate this is the um, issue of uh, global warming. Climate scientists around the world believe that there has been a notable increase in the global temperature of the Earth uh, since the Industrial Revolution, and have come up with a theory that quite logically links this increase in temperature with the increase in black greenhouse gases in the atmosphere. As you see, there was an observation from which emerged a theory. With conspiracy theories on the other hand, this initial observation just always seems to be missing, or is for some reason covered up by a government, and only some barely credible reporters or even less credible people on the internet seem to know about it. In essence, this is why you shouldn't have to worry about them. You see, any person could come up with a realistic theory about why the Earth would be destroyed tomorrow or why next week the universe will be evaporated. But as long as there is no initial observation which would give reason for such a theory to be developed, there really is no reason to even think about it. Because that is not how the scientific method works. Well, I hope that has put your mind to rest a bit. And that concludes my two cents on physics and the scientific method. Thank you very much for watching, and I'll see you in the next episode, hopefully soon. All the best, and take care.